Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we are looking at our Yakima Exo swing base system with the gear locker enclosed cargo carrier here at eTrailer. This is a great option if you want to get into the Yakima Exo system, but you want to start small. You have a lot of gear you want to carry. This is a great place to start with the gear locker. Now an awesome thing about the Yakima Exo system is that it is designed to build up and out with all kinds of different attachments. So you can get a cargo carrier, a bike rack, a ski and snowboard carrier, really whatever you want and just put them together to create the system you want for your adventures. When you arrive at your destination and maybe you don't want to unpack your whole box, you can actually just take the entire box with you. To do so, you have to unlock these tabs right there and then loosen these speed knobs. So once you have them completely loosened, you can then have someone carry the other end, just lift it off the arms and you're ready to go. Now the install process for throwing our gear locker onto our swing base is super quick and super easy. So let's follow that. So the first thing you start with is the driver's side arm. With these arms, just pull that knob and then pull out the arm. That knob will Secure it back into place right at that end. And then you can grab your gear locker with it unloaded. It's actually really light and just toss it onto those arms and slide those cleats into those tracks. Make sure it's unlocked all the way. That way it will slip in right there. And with it secured, you can then tighten it down with these speed knobs just like that, one and two, and then lock it into place, and that's it. Now let's talk about dimensions. So the box itself, or the gear locker itself, has the dimensions of 60 inches long, 23 inches wide, and 16 inches tall. Now let's open it up and take a look at your actual inside dimensions. So there are some grooves inside the box itself, so we'll take a look at the smallest um, dimension. So for your length from one ledge to the other ledge, it sits at 53 inches. The walls are angled outwards, so you have more space at the top compared to the bottom. So here at the bottom, you have a distance of about 17 and a half inches. On the inside, we have four integrated tie down points that come with their own straps and metal buckles just to help secure your cargo. Now that we've seen how much space we have inside, let's fill it up. Here we have an example of different items that you can store inside your gear locker. I recommend picking up these gear totes, especially if you have small items like sunscreen or tools that you don't want scattered around inside the box. This will help keep you organized or if you want to organize things according to camping stuff, sleeping stuff, this is a good way to do that. Now let's put these inside the locker. So these gear totes stored directly inside the locker. You can see how they are perfectly shaped to fit inside. And we'll have one, two of the totes in here and we can load it up with, I have my 80 liter bag and a dry bag. Here I've loaded it up with all of my equipment and gear and you can see there's still a lot of space to store things. You even have a space for this nice little hat and you don't have to worry about getting crushed. Another one of the Exosystem accessories is the Yakima back deck, which is a bamboo table. This fits perfectly inside your gear locker as well. Depending on how much you fill this up, you can put it on the top or the bottom. It's really up to you. This does have a weight capacity of 100 pounds. So as you load up your gear locker, just make sure to stay within that weight limit, especially if it's loaded onto your swing base. Now, if it's loaded onto your top shelf, you have a weight capacity of 80 pounds. If you get this as the kit with the swing base and the gear locker, you can see here how this has a key to lock the system. So with it unlocked, it just opens right up. With it locked, you can take that key out if you have them together, one key can access everything. If you get this separately, try to make sure to get lock cores in order to match them up. This is like a roof box on your hitch. So with roof boxes, you are usually concerned about the levers to open and close them. You can see that this one uses a spring-based system as well as a lever to hold it upright when you have it in the open position. 
Now, if you are carrying larger items, you do have a lot of space to load it in. So with the lid open, it's about 18 inches. It also has a nice scratch resistant finish here or an automotive finish and it's made of a premium ABS plastic construction. One thing though is while it is scratch resistant, it is kind of easy to leave smudges with your hands. While you can access your cargo right here by your hitch, you can also swing this away since it is on the swing base. And to do so, there's a knob here in the back that you need to rotate. Once you've loosened that knob far enough that it releases this swing base, you can then pull this knob and push that base out all the way out until that knob secures it at the end and you can see how you have plenty of space maybe to access your trunk, put things away, lower your tailgate, whatever you need to do while still being able to access your gear locker. When you're ready to put the swing base back into position, just lift this up and pull that arm in. Just slide it right up that ramp and then that knob secures it in place and then tighten down on this knob and that will secure your entire system. For those who like to go overlanding or off-roading, you might be concerned about ground clearance. So note that this does sit on top of the swing base. So just make sure you have enough clearance for the swing base itself and you'll definitely have clearance for the gear locker. Now a general rule whenever you are carrying cargo on your hitch is to be mindful of where your exhaust is. This swing base system does give you extra clearance when you are out and parked, but when you are on the road, you have to make sure that your cargo carrier doesn't get too hot. While this does have that weight capacity of 100 pounds, it's also wise to try to have it as evenly distributed as possible. So a good rule of thumb is to have half of your weight here in the middle and a quarter on each side. I did have a conversation with some of my coworkers. If you have some questions, hopefully this will answer that. So we've been able to play around with all of the Yakima Exo system down here all week. We've been throwing things on the the swing base, the top shelf, we've been mixing them around, loading them up, taking them off. It's a lot of different products, so I understand if you guys have any questions about how the system works, this is your time. So these uh, products will only work on the swing base, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. they will. The swing base is the core to this entire system, and nothing else will work if you do not have that swing base. And what products do you have on there right now? So right now I have the swing base into our and on top of the swing base is our gear warrior, which is like a roof basket for your hitch. And then we have the top shelf installed. Which the gear warrior you can actually throw on these uh, little wheels and we can actually make it into something that's portable. Yeah. Yep. Now, could you carry two of the Gear Warriors? Could you carry one where it is now and then put another one up on top? Yep. Yes, absolutely you can. So you can get, for the cargo carriers, you can carry two of them each. So the Gear Warrior is the cargo carrier and the Gear Locker is the enclosed cargo carrier that looks like a box. So you can have both of those on there at the same time. So both of those or two of the Gear Warrior or two of the locker that you you can like mix and match those which is really nice and then do you have the bike rack in? yes i'll actually grab that bike rack real quick so the thing about the bike rack is if you're gonna be loading two things at the same time the bike rack has to be by itself on top all right right if it doesn't get caught on your pants <laughs> so like for the bike rack if you do have bikes, obviously it's going to be pretty tall. But so if you have the gear warrior or the gear locker on the bottom, the bike rack goes on top. And you couldn't put two bike racks on there. No, no you can't. <laughs> There's uh, a there not very much room for that. No. But yep. So that's how quick and easy it is just to toss something on top. And now you can carry two bikes as well as all of your equipment on the bottom. Now, how about locks? There's a lot of places to put lock cores on the system. I think the most I counted was nine all at once. 
I think it was with the bike rack and the um like the gear locker on the, the bottom. It was the gear locker, yeah. Yeah. Because the swing base comes with three locks. So one for each of the knobs and then there's a hitch pin. The top shelf comes with three locks. Again for the knobs and the hitch pin to hold the top shelf. And then each of the items have their own spots for lock course. Like the bike racks have two lock core spots on one on each arm to lock each bike. So you can have at least nine lock cores on your system at once. And these don't come with the lock cores pre-installed. You have to add them separately? Yes. So they come with a plastic end, and that's what you add the lock cord to. Right. But I mean, that way you could make sure that you have all of them the same key number so you can have them all keyed alike. Yeah. So like here on our snowbank, we still kept the plastic lock cord on there just so you can see what it looks like. So it will still function the exact same way. It just won't be able to be locked until you add a lock cord. Cool. Now the swing base um, comes with the locks because that's an important part. I believe it comes with the locks. Yep, it did whenever we were putting it together. Yeah, because that's what you need to use the knob. So lock cores are definitely a big one. It's almost like if you're getting one of the kit systems, you'd almost want to just yeah. have those bought I already. Think, I think the best thing to do is once you get the swing base, also get like eight locks in anticipation of your future accessories. Yeah, because we were talking about it with some of our other co-workers, and it would be a pain if you got like almost everything that the exosystem can give you, and then you have like seven or eight keys that you have to go through and figure out which ones are which. It, it wouldn't be fun. Yeah, it'd be better to get them all at once and then just have one key that works for all of them. Yeah. Yep. Then just add them as you go. Yeah. So the the hitch lock comes with the swing base and the knobs on the swing base could come with locks, but everything else is separate. Everything else is separate. Some of them come with like little lock cores with them, but they're not keyed alike with the rest. Right. So, so it's better to buy a pack, like you said, of eight and then just make sure they're all the same. Yeah, because right now, like... This top shelf is going to have a different key from the uh, bottom swing base, and then the actual like bike right. locks are going to have different keys. So that's already three keys that you have to you know keep track of, and that's only you know a full setup. Right. Of, like we, th this is one of the kits, correct? Um. Yes. So and if you switch it out with the snowbank, or you switch this one with another gear locker. Those also have different locks. So in anticipation of how many accessories you have, try to think about lock cores as well. Good idea. <laughs> is the weight capacity the same for the upper tier as it is the lower tier? No, and that's what you're going to have to be super sure of. Well, not sure of, but check before you load things up. Like here we have the Gear Warrior and it has the highest possible weight capacity, which is 250 pounds if it's installed alone on the swing base. But once you install the top shelf, anything on the bottom has a slightly less weight capacity. And if you put this Gear Warrior on this top shelf, it will have a weight capacity of 80 pounds. So it's a big difference depending on where you mount it. That is a big difference. Yeah, that is a big difference. And I bet that's mostly to do with the hitch itself rather than the actual yes. component com weight capacities. Yes, all because it's further away from the hitch. Like right. with any hitch than we have, we have the weight capacity. So also the top shelf can be pushed out if you're worried about clearance for your back. So I, I believe that would also... A, a, be why they have a lower base weight capacity. Yeah, the further away you get from the the receiver hitch, the more to more pressure there is on. Yeah, torque. But yeah, Phys it's more physics. Yeah, <laughs> there's more physics involved. Yeah. Now, much like uh, a lot of bike racks will fold up, so you can pull into a garage or or whatnot. Is there any kind of fold up option for this, or do you have to remove it from your hitch if you're in a tight spot? Yes, you'd have to. Well, yeah, 
So you, you have to remove it. It swings away, which is it's you know compromise for not being able to tilt away or fold up. But yes, the closest thing you could get to like folding it is taking almost everything off. Uh, like you can take off your equipment and you can take off the top and then the two bottom arms fold in. Mm -hmm. That's about the closest thing that you would get to it, but it's not like you can fold it any other way. Um, and you still got a good amount sticking out, but at least those those two Yakima arms are going to slide in against the uh, base. Did we get a measurement on that when um, you just where how far out from the hitch pin hole it sticks when those arms are folded in? Because I can almost guarantee you someone's going to ask. We had on that. We did some test fits on it and we did those. So I measured from like hitch pin hole and it was like about 19, 20 inches. I'm not sure. I'm it's definitely in the demo videos for that. Uh, I also did some test fits on the RAV4 and on a truck, kind of like to see the difference for that. Um, but mainly that length added was also with the arms extended because if they right. went back to the garage with their equipment, I usually measured for this load warrior sticks a little bit further out. So the total, total, total length that is at about 34 inches. Okay, so like minimum with just with nothing on it and the arms folded in is about 20, but maximum is about 30 something inches. Yes. Cool. Can you remove the bike rack and put on the ski rack real quick? I can. Um, one thing though about the top shelf is that it does add a little bit to where it feels slightly heavier, but yes, I can. So first you just have to black it like that. Where it's open, then lift your bike rack off. Then I'll find someone to put this. And then the snowbank comes in two parts. So here's one that just slides into those tracks. Then we'll tighten those cleats down on that. And then lock that tab into place. That secures it. Then here's the second one. only turn when it's fully tightened down that lets you know it's fully tightened down and that's it ready to move any other questions i'm good i'm good okay well glad we could uh, answer some of your questions on the exosystem it's uh definitely an interesting one we've messed around it with yeah. it for what, like last three days, four days? Four days, yes. It's definitely something for people who've already filled up the roof rack or can't get a roof rack. So they're looking into this because these, this is a roof basket, but on my hitch or a roof box on my hitch, plus a ski and snowboard carrier. Um, so I do see people that are thinking of whether to get a trailer or this as an option, as a comparison. Yep. And I would definitely say that if somebody's wanting to buy this, they're going to want to be able to get as many of the pieces as possible. This doesn't seem like something you would want to be like, oh, I'm just getting this for uh, skis or for a bike. Like this is something like, oh, I need room for my skis, my bikes, and then maybe I'm going to go uh, just camping and I need two cargo carriers for the week or something like that. Sure, that makes sense. That was going to be... That was my one question is um, after our conversation this morning um, that is this a bike rack? Like if you were just going to get the bike rack, is it really that comparable to other swing away bike racks or is this kind of more trouble than it's worth? It's you know what I mean? Good, but like it, it's like, you know, having a piece of like a massive puzzle. It's like you just don't want that specific piece if you can't fill out the rest of it. Yeah, I think the beauty of it is how fast it is to mix and match. Like, I cannot, I have not been able to install a bike rack as fast as I was to do this, like any other hitch mounted bike rack. Um, so that base is what creates the speed. And I don't, it's 
the beauty of it is that mix and match modular ability. So at its price point, let's say just the bike rack on the swing base, I do not think is as effective as a bike rack created just for your hitch. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's that's what I was wondering. So I just um, after you guys have been able to think about it a little bit more or, or you know, reflect how it compares to other swing away bike racks. So I think if anybody were to stumble upon it in that bike rack category, that's good to know that it's like, yeah, you can buy this just as a bike rack, but there are better options if that's all you want. And this is really more for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope that answers all of your questions about the system. There's a lot of components. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise. <laughs> yeah, sure. Awesome. We'll do. Bye. Bye. And that was a look here at our Yakima Exo Swing Base System with the Gear Locker Cargo Carrier here at eTrader.com.